Hi, this is Yari Villanueva, the TAPS Bugler, and I'm here to talk today about the history of TAPS and also about TAPS Across America and TAPS for Veterans. It consists of 24 notes played on an instrument that can only play five pitches of the overtone series. It is a call that is easily recognized within the first three notes. It's usually played on a bugle or trumpet. It's the only call in the military that's played slowly throughout. Its simplistic melody has evoked emotions from the most hardened combat veteran, and its origin has been clouded in mythology. It's a call that has a dual purpose, one to signal lights out at the end of the day, and the other as a formal military honor to those who have served in uniform. It's a call that has been open to interpretation and arrangement, from a solo rendition to an echoed version to accompanied arrangements and in musical settings. It's a melody that has had many lyrics set to it. It is a piece of music performed by polished military professionals, amateurs, school bandsmen, and volunteers interested in providing the service at veterans' funerals. It is America's National Song of Remembrance, a recognition passed by Congress in 2013. On November 11, 1918, a bugler sounded ceasefire, which brought hostilities to the end of the war to end all wars. Three years later, on the plaza of the Memorial Amphitheater at Arlington National Cemetery, an unknown soldier from that war was buried with full military honors. Over the next 63 years, three more Americans would be laid to rest next to the World War I unknown, symbolizing their greatest contribution to our nation. At each of the interment ceremonies, a bugle call was sounded as a tribute to those who, as Abraham Lincoln put it, gave the last full measure of devotion. Of all the military bugle calls, none is so easily recognized or more apt to evoke emotion than the 24 notes that comprise taps. The melody is both eloquent and haunting, and the history of its origin is interesting and somewhat clouded in controversy and myth. The use of taps is unique to the United States military, as the call is sounded at funerals, wreath layings, and memorial services, yet it is recognized anywhere around the world. The call was first sounded during the American Civil War when Union General Daniel Butterfield was not pleased with the call for to extinguish lights, the lights out signal, feeling it was too formal to announce the day's end and he decided to change it. Up to the Civil War, the infantry call for extinguished lights was printed in Silas Casey's Infantry Tactics and other manuals, the music having been borrowed from the French. With the help of his brigade bugler, General Butterfield adapted taps from an outdated bugle call no longer in use. The new call was meant to honor his men who were camped at Harrison's Landing, Virginia, following the Seven Days Battle. The call sounded that night in July 1862, soon spread to other units of the Union Army, and may have even been used by the Confederates. Taps was made an official bugle call after the war. Daniel Adams Butterfield was born in Utica, New York on October 31, 1831. He was the third son born to John Butterfield and Melinda Baker Butterfield. John Butterfield was a prominent Utica businessman who pioneered the transportation business and was instrumental in starting America's first Overland Express service. Young Daniel was enrolled at private schools and the Utica Academy. 
He graduated from Union College in Schenectady, New York in 1849 at the early age of 18 and took up the study of law. Butterfield found himself too young to enter the bar, so he decided to embark on an extended trip out west. He traveled to the territory of Minnesota and journeyed through the forests with an Indian guide. Butterfield moved to New York shortly afterward and became the eastern superintendent of the American Express Company. He joined the 12th Regiment of the New York State Militia and, despite his lack of military experience, rose quickly to the rank of colonel. When the Civil War began, the 12th Regiment mustered in New York City and sailed for Washington, D.C., after arriving, the regiment was assigned guard and garrison duty in the capital, including guarding the executive mansion. On May 24, 1861, Butterfield's regiment was at the head of the Union column that advanced into Alexandria, Virginia, over the long bridge spanning the Potomac River. Butterfield was soon promoted to Brigadier General and given the command of the 3rd Brigade of the 5th Army Corps, Army of the Potomac, which included regiments from New York, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. His brigade took bar part in a battle at Gaines Mill near Richmond, Virginia on June 27, 1862. Despite a serious injury, Butterfield seized the colors of the 83rd Pennsylvania and rallied the regiment to hold their ground during a critical time of the battle. This action allowed the Army of the Potomac to withdraw safely to nearby Harrison's Landing. He later received the Medal of Honor for that act of heroism. The Army was camped at Harrison's Landing on the grounds of the Berkeley Plantation by the shores of the James River from July to August 1862. It was during this time that Butterfield's association with the bugle call taps started. Butterfield was no stranger to bugle calls. He knew the importance and had actually composed a special unit or prelude call. A prelude call was a short signal that preceded a regulation call to let soldiers know that the call was meant for them. <laughs> He had trained his buglers in the use of the unit call, and among those was the young bugler of the 83rd Pennsylvania Volunteers, Oliver Wilcox Norton. It was during this time Butterfield decided to change the regulation call for extinguished lights. Norton wrote about the creation of this new call, which was to become TAPS. He wrote, During the early part of the Civil War, I was bugler at headquarters of Butterfield's brigade. One day, soon after the Seven Days Battle on the peninsula, when the Army of the Potomac was lying in camp at Harrison's Landing, General Butterfield, then commanding our brigade, sent for me, and showing me some notes on a staff written in pencil on the back of an envelope, asked me to sound them on my bugle. I did this several times, playing the music as written. He changed it somewhat, lengthening some notes and shortening others, but retaining the melody as he first gave it to me. After getting it to his satisfaction, he directed me to sound the call for taps thereafter in place of the regulation call. He continued, The music was beautiful on that still night and was heard far beyond the limits of our brigade. The next day I was visited by several buglers from neighboring brigades, asking for copies of the music, which I gladly furnished. I think no general order was issued from Army headquarters authorizing the substitution of this for the regulation call, but as each brigade commander exercised his own discretion in such minor matters, the call was gradually taken up through the Army of the Potomac. Butterfield corroborated this story. He wrote, The call of taps did not seem to be as smooth, melodious, or musical as it should be, and I called in someone who could write music and practice the change in the call of taps until I had it suit my ear. 
and then, as Norton writes, got it to my taste without being able to write music or knowing the technical name of any note, but simply by ear arranged it as Norton describes. On the surface, this seems to be the true story and true history of the origin of taps. Indeed, the many articles written about taps cite this story as the beginning of Butterfield's association with the call. Certainly, Butterfield never went out of his way to claim credit for its composition. However, we have discovered through research that the call originated in an earlier bugle call. Butterfield did not compose taps, but actually revised an earlier bugle call. The call we know today as taps existed in the last five and one half measures of an earlier version of the call tattoo found in the infantry manuals of 1835, which had gone out of use by the time of the Civil War. And Butterfield knew of this early call from his days before the war as a colonel in the 12th New York Militia. In the interest of historical accuracy, it should be noted that General Butterfield did not compose taps. Rather, he revised an earlier call into the present-day bugle call we know today as taps. This is not meant to take credit away from him. How did the call become associated with funerals? The earliest official reference to the mandatory use of TAPS at military funerals is found in the U.S. Army Infantry Drill Regulations for 1891, although it had been doubtlessly been used unofficially long before that time under its former, former designation, Extinguished Lights. The first use of taps at a funeral occurred in 1862 during the Peninsular Campaign in Virginia. Usually three volleys were fired during a military burial service. This practice may have originated in the old custom of halting the fighting to remove the dead from the battlefield. Once each army had cleared its dead, it would fire three volleys to indicate that the deceased soldiers had been cared for and the army was ready to resume its fight. The tradition of firing three volleys at funerals was noted in regulations and in manuals. In modern day ceremonies, the fact that the firing party consists of seven riflemen firing three volleys does not constitute a 21 gun salute. That is only rendered by cannon firing 21 times. During the Peninsular Campaign, Captain John Tybalt of Battery A, 2nd Artillery, lost a cannoneer who, who, who died. The soldier then needed to be buried at a time when the battery occupied an advanced position concealed in the woods. Since the enemy was close, Tybalt realized that it was unsafe to fire the customary volleys over the grave. He worried that the volleys would renew fighting. It occurred to Captain Tybalt that sounding taps would be the most appropriate ceremony to use as a substitute. He ordered it to be sounded during the burial. 
The practice thus originated was taken up through the Army of the Potomac and finally confirmed by orders. The first sounding of taps at a military funeral is commemorated in a stained glass window at the Chapel of the Centurion, the old post chapel at Fort Monroe, Virginia. The site where Taps was born is also commemorated by a monument located on the grounds of Berkeley Plantation, Virginia. This monument to Taps was erected by the Virginia American Legion and dedicated on July 4, 1969. The monument was rededicated in July 2012 on the 100th and 50th anniversary of the bugle call Taps. Taps Across America, the National Moment of Remembrance. On Memorial Day, Americans remember those who have died in military service to the United States. The National Moment of Remembrance is an annual event that asks all citizens, wherever they are at 3 p.m. local time, to pause for a duration of one minute in silent tribute to the men and women who have honorably served in uniform and to those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for our nation. TAPS Across America honors those military members. At 3 p.m. local time, on Memorial Day, thousands of participants will be spread out across our nation to sound the 24 notes of our most solemn bugle call, TAPS. Buglers and trumpeters can sound the call from their front porch, on their apartment balcony, driveway, sidewalk, at cemeteries and memorials, and to make sure that this musical tribute is given to those who, as Abraham Lincoln put it, gave the last full measure of devotion. TAPS Across America is sponsored by TAPS for Veterans, an organization dedicated to finding live buglers for funerals and memorial services. It was founded in 2012 by me, Yari Villanueva. Um, I had served as a bugler at Arlington National Cemetery for 23 years, and you can find my bio on the internet pretty easily by uh, just Googling my name along with bi bio. Taps Across America debuted in 2020 uh, when we teamed up to put this together and we invited buglers and musicians to sound that call at three o'clock. And this was at a time when the COVID pandemic canceled all Memorial Day services. And the response was overwhelming. Over 10,000 musicians joined in a nationwide salute to remember the fallen service members. And Taps Across America brought to the country together, offering everyone an opportunity to honor, remember, and reflect in the true spirit of Memorial Day. The fourth annual Taps Across America will again happen on Memorial Day and once again bring together thousands of musicians to sound the call at 3 p.m. local time. We hope that uh, you'll be able to join us for that. Uh, anyone who can sound taps on a trumpet, bugle, or similar instrument is welcome. Uh, the call will be played, of course, on Memorial Day at 3 p.m. You can play anywhere of the locations that I mentioned before, a memorial on your front porch, balcony, driveway. And uh, please go to www.tapsacrossamerica.org for more information. And you can also visit our page, www.taps for veterans for more information about how you can help provide services uh, at military funerals. So thank you very much. Uh, I hope this uh, gave you a little information about the history of TAPS and what we do with TAPS Across America and TAPS for Veterans. You can also check out my personal website, www.tapsbugler.com, which has a lot of historical information on bugling, TAPS, and the people who have performed TAPS over the many, many years. So once again, thank you so much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this program, and uh, I hope you have a great day. Thank you.